Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is fathom. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first and most common way for you to either see or hear the verb fathom used is to mean to understand someone or something after a great deal of thought. Many times, uh, and we'll see this a little bit later as we look at some examples, we can replace the verb understand with fathom. Um, and I'm going to point out that many times um, this is used um, in the negative even. So uh, again, we'll look at some examples later, but someone is usually noting they are unable to understand someone or something. A second way you might hear fathom used is to mean to measure the depth of water, so how deep the water is. Now, this particular verb in the second definition here was far more common several hundred years ago when much of our travel and movement was done by boat or ship. Um, since we now have airplanes, cars, trucks, trains, um, maybe a little less common to hear that uh, second definition. Of course, there's still travel by boat and ship, um, but unless you're working in that industry, I don't think you're super likely to hear this verb used with the second definition. You should know that fathom is a regular verb. To make the progressive tense, all we're going to do is add ing to form fathoming. The past tense and participle forms of this verb are made by adding ed. Our base verb fathom m ends with a voiced m sound, so our past tense ending is just going to make a d sound. We're not adding an extra syllable with this. It should sound like this, fathomed, fathomed. Now, there are not any phrasal verbs that we need to study with this particular verb, so that's going to allow us to look at a few different examples of fathom being used. And the first two examples I have for us, I want to note, they're not being used as verbs. Instead, you're going to see two plus our verb of the day, that's an infinitive, and infinitives function like nouns in a sentence. Even though um, these aren't true verbs, I still thought it was a good illustration of, of the meaning. So let's take a look at our first example. This comes from the biography of Susan B. Anthony. She tried to fathom this small, white-haired, colorless judge upon whose fairness so much depended. So remember, um, we can many times replace fathom with understand, right? She tried to understand this person, this individual, right? And they go on with the description. That's, that's what the sentence is describing. A second uh, example I have is from an obituary. So this is an account of someone's life who has passed away. Um, it's frequently published in newspapers. Um, you might also see it on funeral home websites um, as well. But it illustrates another common way you'll hear fathom used. It's hard to fathom the impact this coach had on his family, his students, his athletes, and his friends. So again, here, our meaning is understand. It's hard to understand. And I picked these, these first two examples, again, because they're, they're common ways. You're going to hear tried to fathom, uh, attempted to fathom. It's hard to fathom. It's difficult to fathom. Um, those, uh, again, are very common ways uh, to hear this word used. A second common way um, is with modals. Right? And again, this, these are going to be negative modals, more, more common. So um, you might hear can't and our base verb, fathom here, uh, for present or future ability. You might also hear couldn't for past ability. So the, the ability here is the ability to understand. And you're going to see that in our, our next two examples. So um, example three says, others of us can't fathom tackling anything close to the traditional Thanksgiving menu. 
So this uh, recent newspaper article um, was offering advice about what to pick or what to cook if you were hosting a Thanksgiving meal. Um, and the authors here were saying many of us can't begin to understand or even think about how could we cook for so many people and make so many different dishes. So we're not able to even begin to think about this. Like, oh, I'm going to someone else's house or I'm, I'm having a very small Thanksgiving celebration. The last example I have here is um, to me very sad, a sad event. Um, about a week and a half ago, um, there was an incident where someone drove their car through a parade and they um, ran over uh, children, adults, participants who are in the parade. And, and in an article giving an update on some of the victims the, was this sentence. Kevin Zeitler tweeted that he attended the parade yearly while growing up in Waukesha and couldn't fathom this happening. So um, you don't have to know who Kevin is uh, to understand this sentence, but a professional football player, he's saying, I, I grew up going to this particular parade. I can't understand how this happened. I couldn't imagine something so horrible ever happening at this very happy, joyous celebration. Now, let's spend just a couple minutes looking at some words that are related to our verb fathom. The first word we're going to look at it has the exact same spelling and the exact same pronunciation. It's just the noun form of this word. And our noun form is going to tie back to our second uh, meaning for the verb, right? So as a noun, fathom is used to describe a unit of length. Um, and that unit of length is about six feet or 1.8 meters. And it's usually uh, used to measure the depth of water. Again, how deep something is underwater. So an example of this, the greatest depth of this sea is 100 fathoms or 600 feet. Another uh, word that you might hear is the adjective fathomable. So this is going to go back to our first definition of the verb. So capable or able of being comprehended or able to be understood. An example of this might be, the accused said, there's no fathomable way I could have committed this crime. Right? Um, I can't even begin to think of how I would have done it. The last related word we're going to look at today is the adjective unfathomable. It can relate back to both definitions of our verb. So um, un, uh, that prefix means not. So this could mean uh, someone is not able or capable of comprehending or understanding something. Could also just mean something that's difficult to comprehend or understand. An example of this might be it is unfathomable to think over 5.2 million people have died from COVID-19. This is worldwide. Um, that number is, is difficult for me to understand, right? It's um, hard to, uh, to comprehend just how many people and how many lives have been affected by that. Our second way to use this adjective just means difficult to measure. So an example of this, the sunken ship rests on the floor of the ocean at unfathomable depths. So we can't measure just how deep. It's too difficult to measure. What I hope you're noticing with both of these adjectives, fathomable, unfathomable, um, again, it's sort of this negative meaning to it. So um, while fathom means to understand, many times we are using it to note that um, we are unable or um, something is, is too difficult to understand. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.